Okay, so the other day I came in here and pump two, this one here. So that's pump one, that's pump two, that's pump three. Pump two had a lot of vibration. The other pumps did as well, but pump two so bad that these gauge, these gauges right here were actually shaking. All right, so this is what I found, a cracked coupling. Now what we're gonna do here is we're going to replace the coupling and align the shafts. I've already done it with those two, and I'm gonna do it with this one here and show you the process that I used to go through and do it. So first things first, I had to loosen the bolts on the motor base here, and I actually had to take these ones right out so I could slide the motor back far enough to get the old coupling out and put the new coupling in. The other thing that I'm doing here is while this motor is slid back, I'm just cleaning out any of the debris because we have an outdoor air damper here basically to let fresh air in to cool the room. So what I'm doing is just cleaning out these openings so the motor can have proper ventilation. So that's really important. When you're doing all this, you might as well make sure that you see we have some, some lint or some dust accumulating right here. So we're gonna clean all these surfaces out so we have proper ventilation to cool this motor. So I've slid the motor bracket back into position and what I'm doing before I tighten it down is I'm just checking with a straight edge to make sure that on each side, switch my hand, make sure on each side we're sort of lined up. Then I'm gonna tighten these bolts down and then we're gonna do some better alignment by loosening off the motor bolts. Okay, so to do a rough check on your parallel and angular alignment, we're gonna use a straight edge and we're gonna use a caliper. All right, so right off the bat here, I can show you that our parallel alignment is out in the vertical, all right? And it's also slightly out on the horizontal as well. To check angular, we're going to do it with a caliper. And I'm going to do the top and bottom first because if the top or bottom are out, we need to use shims to shim the motor to get the angular alignment correct going up or down. Now I can't get fully underneath because of the pump bracket, but you can see that we're about 0.95 there. All right, so I'm gonna check the top next. So I know that's upside down, but we're 0.99 there. So that means our angular alignment is out going up and down. So we gotta fix that. And the way we would fix that is we would have to raise the motor up from the back to close the gap here at the top. So let's try that. Okay, there we are at 1.327. There is the top at also 1.3278, jumping back and forth. So I think we fixed that. And this is how we did it just with various shims in here, just one by one, trial and error. We've shimmed up the back using a crowbar and we've got that up and down angular alignment sorted After out. After correcting that, you can see that our parallel and the vertical is way out. So now we have to raise this motor up on the front and the back to get it to the right height. Okay, so we're almost there, but as you can see, we still have a small gap. So we gotta raise that motor up just a touch and we'll be right there. Okay, so it looks like we've corrected our vertical parallel alignment here. It's right on the money and we've corrected our angular up and down as well. And just so you guys know, here's the shim kit that I'm using. In this kit, there's actually 13 different sizes, 20 of each, and this is what I'm using to shim this. And as you can see, I've got the shims in place here and here on the front. So now that we're done with the shims, we gotta check for soft foot. Now soft foot is if one of the feet of the motor is not sitting true and it wobbles. And the way you check for that is just by going and tugging your shims. If the shims are not loose, that means the feet are sitting true on the base and we don't have any issues with soft foot. So we're good there. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna check my angular going side to side, okay? So 
I checked this one here, we were at 1.27 and this one's at 1.3. So we have to close this in a little bit and we do that just by sort of tapping the motor, maybe on the back end here, tapping it to close this gap. And then we're gonna check that again. All right, so here's the side here that I can show you quite easily. Now on the other side, we're at about 1.265. Now, we're well within tolerance as far as the specs go for this 8J coupling. Next, what we gotta do is we gotta tighten the bolts on the motor in a cross pattern. So, if I started with this one, we would go to this one next, right here, this one, and then back to this one and repeat. But first we're gonna hand tighten them, snug them, and then perform that cross pattern.